Hello, and welcome to a tabletop bellhop cardboard coat check, or board, gag, board game bag check, or whatever we want to call it. Uh, it's a silly name. We are giving our unboxing series. I am Mo Tuzano, the tabletop bellhop, your cardboard concierge, here to answer your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question we are answering is what's in the box, looking at this box in particular. This is Azul Summer Pavilion the latest version of Azul to come out. Uh, this would be the Canadian printing from Next Move Games. I'm pretty sure in the US it's Plan B Games. That probably also explains the fact it's got the French on the cover. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up. You're gonna get to see what's in the box at the same time I do. I like to do these live on Twitch so that people can hear and see this the same time I do. So you get to see my thoughts or hear my thoughts and see what I'm seeing live and raw. So you get to see this the first time I do. I gotta admit, I know very little about this. It's Azul. I really love Azul. Anyone who listens to the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming podcast, watches our um, live streams, or reads the blog at tabletopbellhop.com, knows I'm a huge Azul fan. I will admit I liked Azul better than Azul Stained Glass of Sintra, but Sintra is still a fantastic game. This looks really neat. Obviously, they've changed the tiles to diamonds. Uh, the only thing I know about this game is that it uses a similar style of marketplace for drafting the tiles, but other than that, I have no clue. So you're gonna learn about this same as I do. So I'm gonna start off by re reading off the back of the box, at least what we can see. So during the 16th century, King Manuel I commissioned artisans to construct Grandois boy buildings. Grandois? I can't even, it's saying it the French way. Uh, one building never constructed before his death was the Summer Pavilion. Designed to honor the most famous of the Portuguese royal family, this design was lost to the annals of time. In Azul Summer Pavilion, players return to Portugal to accomplish a task that never began. Use the finest materials and be careful not to waste any supplies. Only the best will rise up to the challenge. So you have a very similar thing here. Uh, it does tell you it's going to pick tiles of the same color and or one joker tile. Step two, place the exact number of tiles needed. Don't forget to use the joker. Step three, score points. Sounds like an Azul game. Uh, there's a list of the components and everything on the back here. Um, you can see this back box on back of this box online, so I'm not going to hold it up for long. So the next thing I'm going to do is remove the shrink wrap, which I probably should have did before reading the back. And then we're going to tilt the camera down because no one wants to see me. They want to see what comes in this box. All right, shrink wraps off. Knife is out of the way and we are tipping down. I gotta say, I, I like the box. I, I actually think this is probably the prettiest of the this. Uh, the, uh, the original's got a nice look, but I really like the look of this. I find this one really sticks out. There we go. All right, that didn't want to come off. On top, we have the rules. Wow, that's thin. That That is, let's see. You got this page. Yeah, this page. Oh, we have a threefold. And I apologize for the ridiculous amount of glare I am getting right now. So let's put this way. As usual for Azul, I expect the rules to be fantastic. They were always clear in the original. So we have one, two, three pages, and then two more on the back. So five pages total. Looks like plenty of examples. Text is a good size. You got dark font on a light background, which everyone who watches and knows my show knows I enjoy. Nice simple looking rule book. There is a variant, which is interesting. And then we have the French rules. Again, I did note we have the Canadian copy of the game. Then we have a extremely thin board. I don't know if this is a player board or a central board. Shows numbers in the different colors. There's obviously a score track around the outside edge. Again, I haven't played this game. I've always liked the aesthetic of Azul. This is no different. This looks really nice. Then we have a much thicker board. So these I'm going to assume are the player boards because they. I'm going to see we have matching here. These are nice and thick. So we have some kind of central market or scoring board here. Then we have player boards, player boards, player boards. Player boards, looks like it plays four players, so that's no change from previous editions. Note, these are two-sided, and I gotta say, like, that looks neat. That looks even neater. 
Uh, I definitely see a similarity to the base game. Obviously, you have the preset patterns versus the open patterns. Our market tiles, I have to assume the scoreboard probably goes up to 80 and you can wrap. I don't see anything interesting for um, making the game more accessible, though, with these. Because that was something they added into Sintra, where they had two sides to the market tile, so you could use them to tell the colors apart. But I do know that they added some nice markings on these. Okay, this is something they added in Sintra that I like, a dump tower. Somewhere to put the tiles when you're done. It's a nice looking Portuguese tower here, so that's a nice touch. Uh, interesting, at least some of the pieces are inside. We'll get to those in a minute. There's actually a sticker to put to the bottom of the, the tower. It's kind of odd they didn't do that, but something to keep it together. Sure. We have the bag. This one's nice and green. So they have a different color with every Azul bag. Nice, bright green. And man, I am... Oh, I have it upside down. There we go. Nice, bright green. And then we have tiles. So we have the, the usual first player tile, which I'm sure someone gets being the first person to take. This is nice. Molded board with a spot for everything down here in the bottom, including a spot for those 80 tokens uh, right over there. It's a nice touch. And we have the tiles. Uh, just like the old, just like every Azul. These are nice. Really nice. Two-sided, and again, for the visually impaired, they have added symbols to every tile. Well, not every, actually. The whites are blank. And the purple. So not every. So it must just be ones that people have problems with. They've added a symbol to them. So you can tell them apart. So there are orange ones. I'm not going to open all these. Green ones. Blue ones. Purple ones. Now again, purple. Yellow and red do not have symbols. And red ones. Nice solid tiles. Uh, they don't look like chiclets this time. Nice little diamond shapes. Looks beautiful. Finally, we have some little tiny components. These I have to assume are for tracking player points. They went with some very muted earth tones here. So there's one thicker round one, which I'm assuming is for marking rounds. Then there is a black, a light gray, a white, and a um, bare wood color for your player colors. And you can already see that in the video. Those are kind of close in shade. The gray in particular does not stick out very much. So that could be a problem with some people, though it doesn't, to me in most of these games, it doesn't really matter as long as you're tracking your own score, but you're not. You're tracking your score on a central playing board. That is where I'd probably replace them. I have some glass meeples. I would probably pull out the glass meeples and use those. So there you have it. Everything that comes in Azul Summer Familion. I gotta admit, I am excited to try this out. I have re I, I love abstract strategy games. I think Azul is one of the best games ever made. I think Stained Glass of Sintra is good, almost as good. Uh, it's a little too thinky, a little bit too much AP, takes a little too long, a little too hard to explain. But many gamers prefer it. Um, personally, I still prefer the base game. This looks fantastic. This looks simpler than... Um, Sintra, I don't know, it looks about the same as the base game of Azul. Well, no, till I try it though. So be sure to follow me on social media Tabletop Bellhop, one word, everywhere, MeWe, Twitter, Skype, wherever, anywhere on the internet, I can be found as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. And I'll be sure to let you know when I get Azul Summer Pavilion played, and I'll be talking all about it. One of the best places to hear about that is on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which you can find on your favorite podcatcher, YouTube, uh, Stitcher, Google Music, all those places, all the regular places. If you dig this video and you like our content, you've been to TabletopBellhop.com and went, wow, this guy reviews a lot of games, uh, head over to Patreon.com and consider tipping your bellhop. That's about it for me. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. Good night and game on.